Okay, Facebook guys and gals. Hopefully you can hear me now, and hopefully I'm not too loud. Did you see that? I forgot to plug up the microphone. All right. So uh, Instagram, we're doing it a little different tonight. I'm sorry, not Instagram. Instagram's up there. Mark, what's up? Facebook down here, and uh, we'll go from there. So today was an active day, and uh, it rained here in upstate New York. And needless to say, I did a broadcast earlier today talking about the bespoke process and how to order a Helderberg bespoke defender. I did it out on the back porch. Would you call that a porch, Steve? Yeah, kind of a porch, whatever you want to call it. I did it in the backyard and uh, left for a bit. And uh, of course, hey, Becky, how are you? Becky, can you hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can. So anyway, I left for a bit and uh, it started to rain with the computer. iMac sitting out there, my stream deck, my microphone, my camera, everything was sitting out in the rain. So uh, I'm hoping everything's working right. So with that said, so I'm waiting and there's a, there's a delay, there's a lag here, of course. And uh, let me check this because I can't see it now. So. So, uh, hopefully it's okay. So, Instagram guys, can you hear me okay? All right, Becky, good. I'm glad you can hear me. So, um, just a little technical difficulties. It's not good to leave your stuff in the rain. Tonight we're going to talk about tires, but uh, I've got a special guest, and it's pretty funny. Um, we were sitting in the chair, setting up the, the, the camera and all that stuff, and you'll never guess what he asked me. Any guesses? No guesses? You don't want me to say it, do you? Okay. He said, does this shirt make me look fat? And I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? We are fat. We have COVID bellies. Of course we look fat. So anyway, all right. I got to do something about that. That's just not right. Okay. So, uh. Let me uh, bring Steve in. I gotta fix my tie. Let me, you guys like my tie tonight? What do you think? <laughs> All right, Steve, come on here. Have a seat with me. So he's, he's got the giggles. <laughs> All right. So tonight we're gonna talk about tires, but I'm gonna do something a little different than just tires tonight. I've got Steve here. Steve is uh, actually picking up his Defender tomorrow. It will arrive tomorrow. It's coming in. You guys have seen it. It's the Skoda blue one. It's the light blue one with the tan top, the soft top. And uh, so audio system goes in this week and the uh, wood floor, which will be mahogany, which we'll get him to talk about that. That goes in this week too. And uh, it, it's gonna be fun. Uh, central door locks will go in. And uh, so he will be here for the week. Uh, I'll kind of tell you what we've done, what we did today for fun, and uh, kind of talk about some of the process of what we're going to go through on that. So uh, with that said, I hope everybody can grab my notes here since we're going to talk about tires to start it out. So Steve, come on over here now. You can come on over here now. Come on. All right. All right. Good deal. All right, everybody say hello to Steve. So here's Steve. And... Uh, so here's the beautiful part. This guy has driven many a miles in a Defender. So you're going to be able to have the opportunity to ask him whatever you want to ask him. And I'll probably have to hop up and see the phone since it's so far away and relay the questions. But anything you want to ask him about driving a Defender, whether um, just whatever, on-road, off-road, miles, uh, performance, whatever you want to ask him because he's driven ones that we were actually in, and we said, holy crap, this is ridiculous. This has no power. We would get there faster on a bicycle. And then he's driven ones, too, that it's like, holy crap, we're going to drift in the corner on this one. So a lot of variety, but let's, let's talk about tires. So, Steve, what kind of tires are you going with on yours? Uh, KO2s. So the BF Goodrich KO2s, but you did want the more aggressive ones, the more... Let's call it meteor, right? 
Yeah, initially I was going to look at the KO3s, but then I thought... KM3s. Uh, yeah, KM3s. KM3s. Excuse me. And yep. those had a lot more rougher ride, and, you know, what I want to do with mine, I'm not going to do a whole lot of off-road with that one, so I think it was more important to have a nicer ride, still have an aggressive look, but a little bit better ride. Yep. So Steve lives in South Carolina on the island, so beach and sand, and uh, but he's also going to do some drives, so you're going to drive to go see Mama Betty, right? Probably. Yep, exactly. So, so how far of a drive is that? Mm, hour, uh, hour and a half, two hours. So what is that, like 150 miles or something? Yeah, it's not even that. Yeah, maybe 130. So 130 miles on that. Um, so here's the, the point we're wanting to make on that, that you can drive a Defender on a road trip. And I think a lot of people, what was your thought on the first time that you actually what did you think about a Defender the very first time? Very first time? The very first one you had? Yeah, the very first one. The <laughs> rust bucket. Yeah, that one was, yeah, each time you slam the door, rust would fall out. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. that one's a little different. Uh, and then it didn't have a whole lot of power. No, it really it didn't. No upgrades. It. Yeah, that one was pretty wore out. But uh, the ones today are pretty incredible. Yep. So let me make sure uh, I'll switch on. So we'll, we'll get into some questions here in a few minutes, guys. But uh, so let's talk about the D130 Enzo. Yep, driven that one many times. Okay. And with those tires, those are the Maxxis Trepador tires for you guys that don't know. The really big 35-inch tire. And there's going to be little knowledge bombs in here as we go through it. So it's that's not a radial tire. It's called the bias ply, B-I-A-S-P-L-Y. So it's not a radial tire. And uh, it's actually an old school technology that they, they put a max speed of that one of 70 miles per hour. But I mean, honestly, could you imagine doing 70 miles an hour in Enzo, the D-130? Not sustained. Yeah. I think you could do peak and kind of come back down. Otherwise, it's going to be uncomfortable. You know, you're going to have a little road float. You know, it's it's you know, it's just like you know, it's like driving on tractor tires. Yeah, it it really is. I mean, it's a competition mud tire, and it's not that the truck wouldn't do 70, but I think you'd have to be a little crazy to try to go 70 for a period of time on those tires. Right, and I think just the the fatigue of the feeling the road, the tires, and those kind of things. I think you'd have a headache, to be honest. And you, yeah, you do hear them, you, you know, you're going down the road. Yeah, they're definitely, they got some noise to them. There's no but they look ultra cool. They do you look cool. You get a lot of attention. You pull up somewhere, they go, holy cow, look at this truck. I know, I pulled up the, the other day to get some gas in that thing, and everybody's like, oh man, thumbs up, cool truck. Yeah, and uh, all I need is a set of bumper nuts on it, and we'd be good to go. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you some of those. Yeah, I need some bumper nuts. So, guys, if you want to mail me some bumper nuts for Enzo, send them over. It's definitely a boy truck. It is a boy truck. There's no doubt. So, it's funny. So, here's a funny story for you guys. So, Steve has two daughters, Mallory and Melissa. You want to tell the story about, was it Melissa, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Melissa. And so, you were going down the road. What happened? Yeah, one of my daughters says, Daddy, that's a, that's a boy truck. I go, how do you know? She goes, look underneath the bumper. I'm like, ooh, yeah. Yeah, it had bumper nuts. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I'd never seen those before. That's a number of years back that I just thought it was funny. So I guess the question is, if I get some uh, bumper nuts that actually have the Helderberg logo on it, who's going to want them? <laughs> it, would you put them on your truck? No. Oh, man. I guess we won't be getting those. No. All right. No. no. So, well. So that's the, the Maxxis Trepador. Um, 35 inch competition mud tire. It's not even a, a DOT legal tire. It's, it's when you buy those tires, it says off road use only. And uh, they'll do the road, but I wouldn't suggest it. All right, so let's move over to the D110 double cab, guys, which is A Rod, which is a D110, but it looks like a pickup truck, one of my personal trucks. So you've spent some time with that. It has 18 inch wheels and is a 265, 65, 18. And it's a BF Goodrich KO2. So what was your, what's your feeling about that one? 
That one feels pretty well. I mean, it just it feels stuck to the road, rides smooth. You can go around t- corners, and you know, it feels like a modern car. Yeah, and I mean, the suspension. Keep in mind, guys, the suspension is our premium suspension. It's been lowered by one inch. It has progressive springs. It has Bilstein shocks, Bilstein steering dampener. It has polyurethane bushings. It has anti-sway bars. It has everything you can do to the suspension. It has coil suppressors uh, or coil isolators. So it has everything and it handles really well. But what do you think about the power of it? Oh, that was it, very powerful, especially when you compare that one to the old white one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I mean, that one couldn't get out of the ring. No, it couldn't. It was it was rough, but but that's kind of what started it all too. Was having that truck and not having the power, but loving the way it looked and saying, "I got to do something about this." So the D110 double cab, where it has full width intercooler, VNT turbo, it has the works. Could you imagine road tripping in that one? Oh yeah, not a problem at all. That yeah. one that has plenty of power, uphills, downhills. You know, just highway riding. It's a good highway car. And so, what about fuel efficiency, though? Yeah, I didn't even, we drove all over the place, and the gas needle didn't even move. It must get, I don't know what that one gets, probably high 20s. And yeah, it's, I haven't really tracked it, but I mean, it's like, so it's, um, I drove to the Albany International Airport to pick you up. Yep. And it was just a little less than full. Picked you up, we ran around a little bit around Albany, um, and came back, and it, it hasn't moved really. No, I think it's made, we've made a couple trips to the store and everything else with it too. Yeah, so fuel efficient, plenty of power. Um, granted, it's it's not a Mercedes G wagon AMG, which is a V8 turbo. It's not that, no. and nor will it ever be. But for an everyday modern day car, it's really it's it's fine. Wouldn't you yep. agree? Yeah, exactly. So, so there's that, and then let's move over to, so uh, the D110 double cap has an 18 inch wheel, 18 inch tire, again, it's a 265, 65, 18. Um, so understand that the wheel, when you go to that, to a 265, 65, 18 wheel, the sidewall is a little shorter, so you don't have, it's not as tall. So when you're hitting the corners, you don't have that wiggle in the tire, it's more of a road tire, more stable, more grippy. It's just more, more of a road tire than an off-road tire. Yeah, exactly. And it, it handles well. So let's move over to Elizabeth. Elizabeth has 16-inch wheels, which is actually a 265-75. So the sidewalls are taller. It has Bilstein shocks. It has a progressive spring and BF Goodrich KO2. So what's your impression of that one? That thing is like a highway machine. Yeah. It, I mean, it's so quiet inside. You know, and I think I drove Elizabeth after driving Enzo, which is, you know, we had the windows down and everything else. It's, it drives good. But when you get in Elizabeth, it's like kind of getting going from a Ford pickup truck to getting in a, a, you know, a Cadillac. You know, it's just very quiet. You know, you don't hear road noise. You don't feel the road as much. Very refined. Yeah. And it's a difference. I mean, an 18-inch wheel is a, a little wider tire, just slightly wider, is much more like a sports car and you go to the one attire that the sidewall's taller, it gives you more of a plush feel. So it's like, do you want the road handling where you feel more of the road, or do you want the plushness where it's comfortable and more quiet? Rolling couch. It, it really is kind of like a rolling couch in Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A, That's what I called it. But how did it handle, like going through the corner? It corners? ran good, yeah. Especially, th- you know, coming up through when you go through Sharon Springs, you go up the mountain and around the turns, yeah, you just... It feels very much like a modern car that handles today. It feels very good. Yeah. So so that's kind of the difference in the wheels and the tires. I'll say that if you're looking for tires, BF Goodrich, they should be paying me money. But BF Goodrich, long-lasting tire, will give you a lot of miles. They're more expensive than Cooper, um, more expensive than General. But a Cooper tire, have you ever had a set of Coopers? 
No. Yeah. Could you ever imagine getting a set of Coopers? Yeah, I don't know. I'm one of those ones that like a very good tire because if you're going to drive and put your family in it or your friends or whatever in a tire, I'm just, you know, I've had some less expensive tires and bought other cars and gone through cars and you can tell the big difference between a quality tire, a highly rated tire versus, you know, like an off-market tire. Yeah, and I would. I I haven't owned a pair of Coopers, so I can't throw rocks at them too much. But I know when you get into the you know, the BF Goodrich, the Michelins, and those, it's a different class of tire. Yeah. Well, you remember um, Grant, I had the Generals back in my younger days. Yeah. Those, yeah, because that's all. Yeah, you exactly. just burned them off real quick. Yeah. And I had a set of Coopers. We tried the Coopers. Oh yeah, one of those ones we drove had the Coopers on it. I remember that. Yeah, it was Brando. Brando had the Coopers, and uh, those Coopers were bad. They as, yeah, they just didn't ride as good. No, they're noisy. Uh, they don't grip in the in the wet. They don't grip in the mud. Um, even the in you didn't drive it, but uh, Maynard, with D one thirty, has the Cooper STT Pro, and those are some hard rubber tires. And that tire is supposed to be an off road tire, and it's yeah. It's not very good. I mean, I haven't had success in it. It didn't do well in the snow. It didn't do good. Didn't do well in the mud, and it doesn't do well in the rain on the pavement. So yeah. I've always they're been, cheaper though. Yeah, I've always been one of those ones. I know I kind of go with what I know is good versus kind of risking and going. Oh, okay, your Cooper's going to be good for yeah. this or that. So I just, you know, I try to stick to the brands that I've had high success with, and I know that they're going to, you know. The, you know that if you have trouble with them, you have somewhere to go back to. Like, you know, you go to the BF Goodrich, the, you know, the, the Michelins and those, you can go talk to them. And then, you know, I've had them swap tires out where if I, hey, this one has a bump in it. Yeah, true. And I mean, it's... And I don't know about the others. I don't know what they... They could have great support. I just don't know. Yeah. I just don't want to risk, you know, a couple Spend thousand it. dollar mistake. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because they're not cheap, but... Yeah, exactly. And I'll say that I do get miles out of the BF Goodrich. I mean, it's, I mean, case in point, Elizabeth, those tires on that truck, I've had that truck for two years. I've daily commuted, you know, 50 miles each way for two years, and they're, they're the same tires. So they've done well. And even the trip to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, you know, that they were the tires that were in place. So... All right, so there's that. Talking about tires, do you guys have any questions about tires, wheels? You know, what can we tell you about tires and wheels? And you guys are kind of quiet tonight. I can't really see Instagram all the way up there. Can you, can no. you read that? No. You can't read that? <laughs> Not from here. Are we getting old or what? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, exactly. So if you guys have questions, please do uh, fire away. And let me see. I know there was some questions looks different back here with no trucks behind you. Yeah, exactly. So, um, all right, so here's a question. What size motor do you use for your vehicle? Stick to stop, stick, stick to stop, question mark, or modified version of stock? So I'm gonna let Steve answer that. Um, he's knowledgeable in this and he can kind of tell you and he's driven many of them so he can kind of yep. give, you the, give you the lay of the land yeah one of the things i did on mine mine is more of a beach cruiser soft top take the top off that kind of thing uh, i think everybody's seen some pictures of it already uh, what i did was i did a 300 tdi with the upgraded turbo the turner performance head the upgraded uh, intercooler and i've driven many of those like that they got plenty of power if you want to go four wheeling plenty of power, pull up hills, you can, that thing is like a goat, you can climb up any mountain with it. So yeah. that's what I went with. And I took Paul's uh, advice on that and all of the ones I've driven with those combinations of those upgrades makes a big difference. Yep, and then you have the new transfer case. Oh, yep, new transfer case, new front end, new rear end. Yep, so new, new front and rear differentials, new transmission, new transmission all that, and I mean it's, uh, so sticking, the, there's a beautiful thing about when you use that stock type motor, but you modify it with a VNT turbo, then uh, 
and the intercooler and the exhaust and the, the oh, cylinder yeah, head. The exhaust, yeah. yeah, the exhaust. You have the Heldeberg exhaust. It gives you plenty of power. It gives you plenty of miles per gallon. It gives you a lot of longevity. It's just all a beautiful thing. All right, so Michael's asking, what wheels would you recommend to show off red Heldeberg performance brakes? Ooh, what do you think about that, Steve? I know you like Sawtooth. Yeah, I think the Sawtooth or some, you know, there's a number of wheels that would look out there that would look good with to show off the brakes. What's the one with the large openings on it? I can't remember those. The ones. one that's on the double cab? No, I don't think it's on the double cab. Well, there's the Con wheels, K-A-H-N yeah, wheels. I think that's the ones. That have the larger openings. It's a Con 1983 wheel that has a pretty good size opening that would look good. Um, the, you know the ones that are on Enzo, which are a bead locker. That would look good. That would look good because it's five spoke round spokes. They're, that would look good. That would really show off the performance brakes. Sawtooth would show it off a little bit. Uh, the Portofino what's, red one we just did has the performance. What's the rest of the truck going to look like? True. Well, Michael's truck is going to be white. Nice. It's, so it's going to be... Uh, I got a lot of white cars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's going to be white. Um, he's going to have red interior. Nice. Black carpet. So red seats, black carpet, and black headliner. Nice. Yep. What do you, he's talking about doing black arches, the wheel arches on, on the outside, you know, the wheel arches. What do you think, black arches or white arches? You go either way on that one. Yeah. What are you going to do with the wheels? No, I guess that's what he, Michael's going to have to decide if he wants to do uh, a bead locker style. Which one of the things I did is I took a picture of what m the color of my truck was going to be, and I actually, I don't have photo, I'm never good with Photoshop, so what I ended up doing was taking, like, uh, what's it called with Windows, uh, like, you know, the snipping tool. Yep. I snip pictures of the wheels. You used PowerPoint, it, didn't you? Yeah, I used PowerPoint. I dropped yeah. the picture of the truck in PowerPoint and then snipped and dropped the different wheels on it. And then I got, oh, I like those wheels. Yep. That's what I ended up doing. You know, poor man's uh, Photoshop. But it was very easy and took five minutes, you know, maybe, you know, two hours of staring at it to figure out yeah. what wheels I was going to go with. Yeah. Because I was tore between the aluminum looking wheels or the white wheels and the kind of beachy look versus road look. Yeah, because we looked at like the silver boost wheels. Yep, the boost wheels was the second. The choice. silver ones. And then we looked at some other different silver ones. We looked at some black ones. We looked at all kinds of wheels. Yeah, because then if I changed the wheels, it the grill didn't look correct. So then I had to think about, well, all right, if I do that, let's swap the grill. And then I'm like, eh, I don't know if I like the grill as much as the other one. So we ended up doing something different. Yeah, something really different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way from different from my initial build. Yeah. Oh, boy. Looks like you got a lot of questions here. Wheels, wheels, wheels. So there we go. Yep. So Michael said he uh, needs to decide on wheels. He was thinking about that yesterday. But yeah, I don't know. I really do like the. I guess it's the feeling you're trying to go for. But if I went with the Con 1983, which I think I, those would look nice. That would look nice. But I don't think you would want to do the wheel arches in black then. Because I feel like it would start to contrast too much. Yeah, I think you have to match the look of the truck because either you're going to go for like a beach cruiser look, a vintage look, or you know something that's going to be like a road look or you know one that's lowered and super wide, low profile tires, you know, there's so many things that you can do with it, but you want to kind of have things kind of, otherwise you're going to look like a Frankenstein. Yeah. Well, I think too, we're uh, on Michael's truck, what we're talking about, it's a D90 for, it's a D90. White. Uh, white. We're talking about lowering it with the, the hay rod suspension. So it'd be, it, you can't really tell it's lowered, but it will handle much better. And, and that is the thing, I mean, looking at hay rod, can you really tell it's that much lower than Elizabeth? Yeah. I yeah. don't think so. Yeah, one inch. It's only one inch. I mean, but thinking about that with the lower, I think arches should be white because the arches, when they go black, that makes it more rugged and that's kind of an off-road lifted feel because then it's like you 
want the arches to look like they've been added on. Michael, what I would say is, you know, to do the cheating way I did, open up PowerPoint, drop in the wheel arches, drop in the wheels you want, flip it. What I ended up doing was like doing one wheel on the front, a different wheel on the back, and then reversing it and see what it, you know, because you can drag the pictures around in PowerPoint. That's what worked for me. Yeah. I would do the, I would do the entire truck in white. I would do the roof, though, in black. So arches white, everything else white, roof in black. I would do the anodized, the, the aluminum door handles, you know, the anodized aluminum door handles. That's what I'm talking about. Yep, except where you have the silver ones, do them in black on this one. Oh, I, I love those door handles. Yeah. And, and then, then do the mirrors. Do the, the mirrors. Hinges. The hinges, yeah, do the black hinges. That and would be nice. The license plate light. The license plate light, Get yep. The camera in that one. Yep, that would be cool. And then, uh, big red brakes. So then it's like the, the brakes, the red brakes would be like the star of the show almost. And then the red tow hooks in the front. Yeah, I like that idea. So it'd be very and subtle. And then go with the red interior, kind of. Yeah, and then with the red interior. It. So. I wanna see what that one looks like when it gets built. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. So, no doubt. All right, let me check Instagram since I can't read it from here. Hi, Instagram guys. Uh, what should I add to my car? Is a question, and it's like uh, that's that that could be really broad. So um, I have to clarify that one a little while. All right. So, what is the tallest, widest tire you can use without a lift? Ah, <sighs> boy, that's a tallest, wide, widest tire without a lift. How much rub do you want? Yeah, exactly, because that's the thing. I mean, it's not necessarily the lift, because you'll have plenty. You have plenty of room in that arch for that. The hard part is the rub on the radius arms. Well, not just that, but what are you going to be doing with the car? Because I think, in my experience of driving all the different ones I've driven, driving up and down the road, you may not get it. You may turn real sharp in a parking lot. It may hear a little bit of a rub, or but if you're going to go do off road you may end up with some tire rub when you're going up and down trails and you're doing full extensions of the suspension kind of thing. You gotta figure out, you know, if that bothers you or not. Yeah, I had to adjust that camera a bit. Okay. So, um, I think about the widest that you could go with though on a 16 inch wheel would be like a 285. Yeah, 285, 75, 16, before you started to rub. And it also makes a difference, too, in the wheels and what's the offset of your wheels. Because right. I would never recommend doing wheel spacers. Um, that's just too much, too much stress on the system to go with a wheel spacer. So you'd want to get a wheel that has the right offset to get that wheel out a little farther. And you don't have to worry about the, the height of it generally. It's not going to hit much. But you also have to be careful too, the way the arches come around and when you impact something, like if you're driving over rocks, then it could hit that arch too. So I'd say about the 285, 65 or a 75 would be about it. So before you started having to do modifications. And so thank you, Steve. He says, love the Enzo D130. Um, so, Let's talk about let's talk about Enzo. I mean, Enzo's had over one million views, which is crazy. One video is six hundred thousand. I mean, probably over a million views, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a while that it's like every time I went on Instagram, people were posting that picture, of, you know, in all different weird ways. But uh, what do you think makes it so different? Uh, I think. It's a combination of all of the various things. You got the big lift kit, you got the big tires, you got the bead locker wheels. You've got an, a different color than anything that you see on the road. You've got the roof racks, you've got all of the stuff that's kind of, what's kind of amazing is it all kind of flows together and goes with each other. In fact, you know, we went to the, you know, pick up the wood for the floor and the guys just came up and they're like taking pictures of it and they were like, hey, I know what this truck is. You know, it was kind of different. You know, I've seen, we've all seen some of those defenders that have been 
put together, but they, you know, some of them, they don't really flow together because of, you know, it, it, you know it's kind of like you, you take these different pieces that don't fit, doesn't flow, but with that one, it's all kind of put together. All of the things flow together, everything from the grill to the grill color, you know, all of those things. And it's a very striking vehicle when you drive, you know, it turns heads instantly. You know, because I thought it was interesting. We went and I think it was got gas in it. And, you know, you get out and people are like, hey, can I take a picture with your truck? Yeah. And it's just, and I think it's, yeah, it's different. <laughs> it's, it's different. And I mean, and that's, and I think you're not going to get that with your Mercedes uh, G Wagon. No. And, but I think it's important though, when you do the design of a truck that you have to work through it all and kind of put it all together versus just start bolting stuff on. And I think a lot of them look like that somebody just bolted a lot of stuff on and didn't really say, what is the theme that I'm trying to create? What is the feel I'm trying to create? Just look at all the Jeeps on the road. You see all these different pieces that bolted on. Yeah, that's true. And you're like, oh, that doesn't really go so well. And I mean, and there's a point too, when you put the parts on, you want it to look good. You want it to be striking. Mm -hmm. You want it to not stand overdone. out and not overdone. Yeah, some of them look like Tonka trucks. It's like I'll scroll through Instagram and I'm like, oh, yeah, you started out well, but you kind of missed the mark. So, what's your thought about, I mean, you've seen a lot of different color defenders now. What's your thought about a black defender? Mm. And you've had black cars. Steve actually had a black Monte Carlo. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. <laughs> Got a black Mercedes now, but uh, I don't drive that either. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I've been, you, you see the black in all the movies. You see, I don't know. I think the black's overdone. Yeah, there's a lot of black. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it. There's a black 90 that's sitting out here that is absolutely beautiful and stellar. I mean, the paint, everything, it looks really well done. It's, I love the, the black 90. The black 90 is absolutely stellar. But yeah, but I'm kind of like, yeah, I think I'm looking for something different, personally. Yeah. What do you think about the Monticino red one? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice, well done, and it flows. You see that red color on the outside, you open it up, and there's the black seats with the red stitching. It all kind of flows together. You know, it's, it's kind of like walking in a house, and, you know, you got beach theme, and then you go into the next room, and it's something else, or the walls are a funky color or whatever. We've all house shopped and found the house, and like, ooh, what were they thinking? And it's the same kind of thing when you look at the truck. It's almost the same thing, at least in my eyes. Yeah. And so, you know, if to do the Monticino red again, which I try not to do duplicate colors. I, I don't like to do a color twice. Um, I'll do a variation like the black one, the black D90. That would look D90. nice on a 90. That would look nice on a 90, that Monticino red. That would. Maybe even a soft top with a dark brown top. That's what I'd love to do. You know, I was, we just, look really nice. we got so busy. So the plan was last year, what we were going to do is Even we were a black top, soft top. The, yeah. I like soft tops. Yeah, no kidding. But that Monticino red with a dark brown top. Can you visualize that? Yep. Or how about that Monticino red with a tan top, like the color of yours? No, I'd have to see that. Yeah. I'd have to drag out my PowerPoint and pull it around. <laughs> Or the the Monticino red with a medium brown top. I don't I don't know what medium brown is. It's like a kind of like a and yours is a, a light colored, yeah. a kind of a darker, a little darker than that, almost a okay. beige. Mm, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a dark brown or even a black. A black would look good too. Yeah, I think on that one, what would look really good would be a dark brown top. Would be my first choice because it would just be different. Yep. Or than the black. Yep. But it was last year I wanted to do a series, but we got so busy we haven't been able to do it, that I wanted to do a series of, I don't know, like 10 soft tops. I wanted to do a black one, Monticino red one, and I wanted all of them to have brown tops, but it would be very unique. Kind of like really yours. Yours fi fills that dream of my series of what I wanted to do. It was like your color, the Skoda Blue, the Phoenix Orange, the black. I'd like to do a brown one. Yeah. 
Mine, the top will probably be off 90% of the time. Yeah. Just to you know, roll up the sides or just completely take the top off and just ride around. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, we can't do that here, can we? No, uh, you, you can ride around Charleston with swatting mosquitoes. My gosh, you know, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Heck, you leave here for a few minutes and everything gets rained on. Yeah. All right, guys, what other questions do you have? What else can we answer for you? And because uh, we have to go eat, we got to keep these delis maintained. <laughs> All right, here. I can't read any of that. It's really you tiny. On that little font. No, the, God, the font is this big from here. All right. All right. So you guys are quiet. I know there's a delay. Um, what else could we share about driving experience? Driving a Defender, because a lot of a lot of individuals have never driven a Defender. I mean. I think we kind of answered everything on it, though, really, haven't we? Or can you think of anything that comes to mind? Mm, different wheels. Different wheels. But I think the wheels, I don't know, in my mind, uh, the wheels, I think it's important to kind of understand, well, what are you going to do with the truck? Are you going to be off-road? Are you going to be part-time? Are you going to be hunting in the truck? Are you going to be just going to get groceries, riding to work every day? I think you have to kind of decide what you're going to do with it and then kind of fit that. But then, you know, you do see, because I've seen some of the trucks that Paul's built where, hey, this is going to be a road car, even though it's got the, the white one with the trepidors on it. You know, I can't imagine, you know, driving two hours to work or something like that. You know, they may live very close, but it's a really cool looking truck. Yeah. But yeah, commuting in that. You know, I've had quite a few people that called me up about uh, Maxim the Super Defender with the 35 inch tires lifted and everything else wanting to know if they can do 85 miles an hour in it and i'm like not just no but hell no and it's kind of like a jeep you know you put 35 inch tires and trepidors on a jeep and you're you're not going to want to go 85 miles an hour in it no i don't care what it is any car yeah i mean even if it was a brand new whatever you could get trepidors underneath a ferrari you wouldn't want to do that yeah, or, you know, if, if you bought a brand new Jeep Rubicon and you put 35 inches on it, or, or even a Dodge Ram 2500. Yeah, you just, if, if you talk to any of the folks that have a really big lifted truck with really big tires, they don't use that as a highway vehicle. Okay, here's a good question. What do you think the one thing, what is the one thing you think people do to overbuild their Oh boy, one thing, huh? Yeah. I don't know. What is something that you see on Instagram when you see a Defender and you go, oh, I don't know, that just looks overbuilt? I don't know. The thing that I see is what I is the mismatch of things. You know, when I look about that, and you know, Paul educated me a lot on some of these different things, what flows and doesn't flow, and it's to me, it's kind of that thing of. What are you going to do with the truck? What are you trying to achieve with the vehicle? It's no different than any other car that you buy today. What are you going to do with it? If you're going to go hunting in it, you don't go buy a, you know, a, I don't know, a, a VW SUV. You know, you got to think about what you're going to do and how that truck is going to be perceived as what are you going to do with it? Is it going to be a highway vehicle? Or do you just want to look cool? Is it going to be a beach vehicle? What are you going to, I don't know, that's just my thoughts. And when I see that, when I see them, they don't match. It's, it kind of looks like, you know, I'm not knocking the Jeep folks at all, but sometimes you just see some of the Jeeps where there's just so much stuff bolted on it and everything's a different color. Or you see things where they've got anodized, they've got black. It's, there's not a theme kind of, it's just kind of mismatched. Yeah. Frankenstein is what I call it. Yeah. And that's a true, I mean, and that's a true term that like, if you're a watch collector, you'll call it a Franken watch. That it's a, you know it's a Rolex on the outside, the face, the, the bezel, but the inside has got all these different parts where it's been put together, and it's not really a Rolex. And I see a lot of people do that to the Defender, and they overbuild it where it just looks wrong. But you're spot on exactly that it's not one thing that somebody does to make it look like that Tonka truck or overbuilt. It's a combination of things that just don't go together. Yeah, like you don't have bright silver and black on the, you know. You, you can, it can look correct, but, you know, think about 
you know, black mirrors and then silver door handles and then, I don't know, some, pick some other, the stuff around the windshield would be either black or silver. Does it really go together or does it look different? It, well, it really is. It's like a good graphic designer that you can make something look good or make it look really bad when you start mixing up the fonts and you don't have a consistent font or they don't flow. It's the same thing with the color. You know, if, you, if your colors don't go together, it will create an overbuilt look. But there's like two things that I am generally not very uh, attracted to on a Defender. And the first thing is the seats, the racing style seats with the holes in them. I'm not attracted to those. What do you think about those seats? No, they don't look comfortable to me. And I'm, I sat in a pair of them. I think it was the Arconic build that I sat in. And I, I don't know. I just I didn't like them. Yeah. And I didn't like that little plastic lip that goes around them. To me, it looks like the old new buggy seats from years ago. Yep. And then, so I don't care for those type of seats. And I don't care for the arches that actually have the bolt holes on them where they're bolted on. Because it looks like it was added on. However, you can take those two things, those racing bucket seats with the holes in them, and the bolted on arches, and if you follow a theme and put it all together where everything flows together, you can make it look good. Yeah, you can you make can it a follow 90, the theme. Put a soft top, big tires, and you know. Yeah, and I've seen that. I've seen where people will take a, do a soft top and they'll put the racing buckets in it. And I'm like, what were you thinking? That, oh, I like those seats, but I want a soft top. And it's like, is it a racing truck or is it a soft top? Because, you know, what is the theme? And I think that's what it is. And it's just like somebody dressing. I mean, you see somebody, how they dress and the shirt doesn't go with the, the trousers are or whatever it's just a mix match and that's what makes something look overbuilt in my opinion duck boots with a suit you know you're not supposed to wear duck boots with a suit i don't know okay all right i'll remember that all <laughs> right guys do so you have any more questions anything we can answer anything we can advise you on it is sunday night um Today, I uh, just kind of give you an idea. Today, we, what did we do this morning? What was it this this morning? Did we do anything this morning? No. We sat out around the fire pit and drank coffee. And then... Went to the range. And then we went to the range in the backyard. Yeah. So... Uh, the long range shooting. Yep. So we did, did some long range shooting, shot uh, 308 and a 6.5 Creedmoor. And... Uh, that was a lot of fun. Which one... What did you think about the 308? I like the 308. It's dead on. So every yeah. time, I don't think I missed anything on that one. You didn't. And you even hit the little targets, too. Yeah. In fact, we've got the little steel targets, the little ones, too, that are supposed to be for the handguns or the pistols. And uh, Steve popped the shot off and took all 15 of them out. Yeah. One shot, 15. Now, that's because I was trying to hit the wood rail. Mm -hmm. And then when I did it, split. It split the wood rail and the targets <laughs> went everywhere. <laughs> yeah, flying everywhere. And then we've got the little orange silhouettes, and that is kind of a that's that's like a satisfying feeling though when you're when you hit the steel and it's like ding and the thing and it's swinging back and forth. So. Yeah. And well, trying to hit it before it stops. Yeah, exactly, Again. exactly. So cranking that bolt, cranking that bolt, cranking that. What do you think about six five Creedmoor? Uh, I couldn't hit much with that one. Yeah. I think the scope has been bumped. That's why I'm going to blame it on. Yeah. Mm hmm So, yeah. Well, but the 308, I could, you know. We were too close for that one because we were at a little over 300 yards. We needed to be back much farther. Yeah. So, yeah. And it maybe it's sighted in for super long. Maybe we can shoot from up here and. Yeah, so we can get it to the 1,000-yard mark. Yeah, from here we can probably hit it. Yeah, exactly. So I think from here, how many yards is it from here? What do you think? 800 at least. Yeah, so a little bit of a distance. If it wasn't raining, I'd go try it. Yeah, no, I wish it wasn't raining. And so, but tomorrow we're going to shoot some clays, right? Yep. So, uh, so if you guys like sporting clays, five stand or whatever, we have enough traps out there, don't we? We should. <laughs> as long as you have enough shoulder left at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. All right, guys, so you're not asking any more questions, I don't think. I'm looking up there to see. I don't you think got a so. Up there, maybe. Oh, yeah, I can't see. Uh, you guys keep on making me get up. All right. Yeah, I'm going to get up. Yeah, I'm going to get up.
appreciate that. Super fun live session. Mm. Keep doing it. We love that. I said, it gives us a way to actually escape. And uh, tonight, are we going to drink anything tonight? Uh, I see a bottle of Blanton's over there we can crack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, have you ever drank that stuff before? Yeah. Okay. Is it pretty good? Yeah, yeah it's tasty. Tasty? All right. You explain the empty garage? No, I haven't. Why don't you explain the empty garage? Well, Since we had Brandon well, it could over here. be the, the cars outside and then it started raining and then you want to pull them back in. Yeah. These whack computers. Yeah, computer. Oh, my gosh. We were coming back. We were in town in, uh, what a town, right? Yeah. yeah. Not much there. We're like, hey, let's pick up, some, or Steve was like, let's pick up some uh, takeout. And I'm like, where are we going to get it? We've got McDonald's, Arby's. What else do we have? Pizza Hut. Taco Smell. Taco Smell. That's it. Yeah. And uh, KFC. That's it. That was it. So we elected to go to the grocery store instead. Yep. So there you go. So we're going to have pizza tonight. It's going to be a pizza night. And then uh, we're going to drink margaritas or Blanton's. We'll have to choose. Yeah, I guess we will. So we're not drinking beer because. No. No. Not with, beer, not with pizza. No. What, you, pe beer doesn't go with pizza? No, it does. No. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, but margaritas. It's going to be a Mexican pizza. Yeah. I hope I don't get censored for that since everybody's politically correct now. <laughs> So anyway, all right, guys. Um, the floor is going to be refinished. That's right. Oh yeah, the, the squirrel. Yeah. So we're really bad about squirrels. I mean, that's the way we roll. But yeah, refinishing the floor tomorrow, and so that's why everything's empty in here, and then uh, everything will get pulled back in and popped in space. So, anything coming to mind? That's it. All right. Cool. All right, guys. Peace out. Have a good one. Have a wonderful. Sunday night. And, My truck uh, comes tomorrow. And Steve's truck will be here tomorrow. And then the wood floor goes in. So you want to talk about the wood floor? Talk about the wood floor. Uh, what we're doing is we're doing, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, mahogany boats like uh, the Chris Craft and those kind of things where you've got the caulk joints in it. And what it is, uh, I first was looking at teak. I didn't really, I really like the look of the teak. I think it was a little different. It wasn't the color of wood. I wanted it to look a little better than what I what I could get out of the teak. I couldn't really find teak that I liked. I ordered some teak. There's a bunch that's here. Really didn't like the color of it, didn't like the grain of it, so we actually found some really nice mahogany. So we're going to go with mahogany. Uh, we're going to do the, uh, the mahogany floor, and in between the joints is going to be white caulk to kind of go with the, the seats. What are those seats? Savannah color? Savannah, which yeah. is a really... Almost white? Almost white. So... And then along with the, uh, the wood color, and it's, it, it's going to look very, I guess, nautical is the, the theme we're going to look for. There you go. All right, and I kept on saying we're going to go, and then we keep on adding more stuff, so let's really make it we're going to go now. All right, sounds good. All right, good. So you guys have a good night, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.